You know these? They're called Boolean tools. And today we're going to make them super easy by going through what they do to save you having to try them all out to see what looks best. Be honest. I know you do it. All right, so the Boolean tools are just up in this corner here. You can see them. There's five of them and they all have different specific effects when you select them. Some of them are pretty straightforward, but others not so much. So we're going to try and make them really easy. So here we have three circles and we're going to try and make this as simple as possible. And you can see that they overlap in these areas here. So if you want to use the Boolean tools, it makes more sense if there is an overlap of your shapes. So we'll explain it as we go. So let's start with the easiest one, which is add. So if we select all these circles, head over to the Boolean tools and we select add, it'll create one big shape of all those three circles. So if the circles overlap, then they will merge together when you click add. Interestingly, the resulting color and effects will be from the bottom most layer. So here you can see that the red circle is right at the bottom compared to the green and the blue one. And when we select add, it makes them all red because they all flatten and merge on top of the red one. Easy enough. Let's go to the next one. So the next one we've got is subtract. So if we select all three of these again, now what this one does is it takes the top layer and removes it from the layers underneath. So in this example, you'll see the green will take a chunk out of the red circle and the blue circle, and then the blue circle will take a chunk out of the red circle. So when we select subtract, you'll see we're resulting in that shape. But where the green circle and blue circle overlap the red circle, it will cut out or subtract those areas like that. So if you ever wanted to cut the other way around, for example, if we wanted to cut the sections out of the blue circle, we'd need to make sure the blue circle is right at the bottom. Now when we select them all and we hit subtract, you'll see the blue one is cut out instead. So the bottom most layer is the one that will be left over. All right, we're flying through this. Next, we've got intersect. Now with this one, you can create some really interesting shapes. So with all these layers selected, if we zoom in, you can see that where all three of them intersect, which is this little area here when you hit the intersect tool it will delete everything except for that little area where they all intersect so if we select that you'll see that we're left with that nice little triangle now if we wanted to let's say we would just intersect the green and the blue intersect that we're left with just the part that they are overlapping so using a bunch of different shapes you can actually get some cool shapes out of using intersect all right still following let's keep going all right, the next one we have is XOR. And I'll be honest, I have no idea why this one is named this, but it must mean something. But you know, anyway, what it does is basically the opposite of intersect. So rather than leaving the shapes of where the circles intersect, it will actually delete those areas instead. Now you're probably thinking it will probably cut out the center part as well because they intersect here. So if we hit the XOR button, you'll see that it deletes this overlapping area, this overlapping area, this one but it leaves the center now the only reason i think that it does this is because it does it in stages if you know otherwise then do please let me know but this is the only way i worked it out is that it first cuts the green and the blue one together so if we hit xor on them be left with that area and then if we add the red one in you can see that this triangle now doesn't intersect with anything at all because of that gap so now when we hit it so now we're left with those three areas cut out because that center part wasn't actually overlapping in that second stage so that's the only way i can make sense of it so it's the opposite of intersect in that it deletes the areas that are intersecting and then finally we've got divide now this one is super useful especially if you're not totally sure of which other one you want to use so what this will do is it'll cut out all the shapes into separate shapes but then rather than deleting anything or merging anything together it'll leave them all open in layers for you to decide what you want to do with them so as you can see in our layer panel here we've got the three circles so if we select them all and now if we hit divide you'll see that we now have a bunch of layers. Now, sometimes what happens is you can get these weird artifacts. So for example, you can see we've got a big triangle here, a bigger green section there, but then we've got these ones, which are, if we zoom in, tiny, tiny little areas. So we've got a few of these. So if we select them all, and if you figure out where they are, which you can see that they all attach to this middle section here, we select that as well, and just hit add, we can clean it up a little bit. So it is something to be aware of that sometimes when you divide, you're gonna get these small little areas that you might have to merge together just to get what you really want. So it is a little bit of a downside, but I've noticed it tends to happen when you have more than two shapes. So it's just something to be aware of. But now what you can see is what we have is that this section here is separate. We've got this section, which is separate, that section separate, this one, that one, that one, on that one so it actually makes it a lot easier if you wanted to decide yourself what you wanted to do 
or if you wanted to join some of these together. So it's a good thing to use if you're not sure which one you want to use, because then you can actually delete some of these if you wanted to. But it's also helpful if you want to create something and then expand it out like we've done here. So that's it. Hopefully that makes more sense of the Boolean tools and puts them into practice for when you want to use them. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer what I can. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe for more videos like this. And if there's anything else that you want me to make super easy, then make sure you drop that in the comments as well. If you haven't already, make sure you check out this video here for more Affinity Designer tips. And as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.